in the planes of frozen nitrogen and where a single day lasts longer than an entire week on Earth. This is Pluto, a dwarf planet that has captured our imaginations for nearly a century. Once hailed as the ninth planet in our solar system, Pluto was reclassified in 2006, a decision that sparked ongoing debates in classrooms, observatories, and living rooms around the world. Yet Pluto's story is far from over. Rather than fading into obscurity, it has taken center stage again, not because of some catastrophic event, but because of the unique role it plays in teaching us about the intricate ballet of celestial bodies, the forces that shape our solar system, and the tantalizing hints of worlds beyond our own. Pluto is more than a frozen rock drifting at the edge of our cosmic neighborhood. It's a dynamic world rich in mystery and scientific significance. What makes Pluto so special? Discovered in 1930 by a young astronomer named Clyde Tombaugh, Pluto was a puzzle from the beginning. Unlike the other planets, which follow nearly circular orbits around the Sun, Pluto traces a wildly elliptical path. Like a cosmic roller coaster, it takes Pluto 248 Earth years to complete a single orbit around the Sun, meaning that since its discovery, it hasn't even completed one full trip. Think about that, a journey so long that no human alive today will see Pluto return to the position it occupied when Tombaugh first spotted it. But Pluto's intrigue goes beyond the length of its orbit. Its path is not just elongated, it is also steeply tilted, by about 17 degrees, compared to the flat plane where most of the planets travel, a region known as the ecliptic. Imagine the solar system as a spinning record, with planets gliding along its grooves in an orderly procession. Pluto, however, cuts across the record at a steep angle, dipping below and soaring above the paths of its neighbors, a celestial rebel that defies easy categorization. Perhaps the most bizarre aspect of Pluto's orbit is its relationship with Neptune. For about 20 years out of its 248-year journey, Pluto actually swings closer to the Sun than Neptune, the gas giant 17 times its size. The idea of a tiny dwarf planet sneaking inside the orbit of such a massive neighbor might seem like a recipe for disaster. How could such a small body avoid colliding with a giant? The answer lies in a remarkable phenomenon known as orbital resonance. Pluto and Neptune are locked in a 3 colon 2 resonance, meaning that for every three orbits Neptune completes around the Sun, Pluto completes two. This isn't a cosmic accident but a finely tuned gravitational dance that has played out over billions of years. Their orbits are synchronized so precisely that, despite their projected paths crossing, they never come close to colliding. At their closest approach, they are still separated by millions of kilometers, with Pluto's inclined orbit keeping it well above or below Neptune's path. This elegant balance is a testament to the stability that can arise from gravitational interactions, even in what appears to be a chaotic system. Understanding Pluto's orbit isn't just about appreciating an astronomical oddity, it provides a window into the history and evolution of our solar system. To grasp this, we must travel back 4.6 billion years, to a time when our solar system was a swirling disk of gas and dust. The giant planets, including Jupiter and Neptune, did not form where they currently reside. Over time, their immense gravitational pull caused them to migrate, reshaping the orbits of countless smaller bodies, including Pluto. Some astronomers believe that Neptune's outward journey pushed Pluto into its current eccentric orbit and trapped it in the 3 colon 2 resonance. Today, Pluto resides in the Kuiper Belt, a vast ring of icy objects beyond Neptune. It is one of the largest known members of this region, a frozen relic from the solar system's earliest days. By studying Pluto, scientists can piece together the violent and dynamic processes that shaped the planets and led to the solar system's present structure. Given Pluto's stable relationship with Neptune, why do we occasionally hear sensational claims about possible collisions? Much of this stems from misunderstandings. When early astronomers noticed that Pluto's orbit crossed Neptune's, they feared a future impact. But decades of careful observation and sophisticated computer modeling have shown that their orbital resonance ensures continued separation. In fact, this resonance, combined with the gravitational influences of other giants like Jupiter and Saturn, acts as a kind of cosmic safety net, keeping Pluto's orbit stable for billions of years. Even small perturbations that could otherwise lead to chaos are absorbed or redirected by these interactions. The system is delicate but resilient, a complex interplay of gravitational forces that maintains order despite the seeming randomness of space. The mission that truly transformed our understanding of Pluto was New Horizons, launched by NASA in 2006, the same year Pluto was demoted to dwarf planet status. This spacecraft traveled for nearly a decade, covering over 5 billion kilometers to reach Pluto in July 2015. When it arrived, the world saw Pluto in stunning detail for the first time. 
It was no longer a blurry dot at the edge of the solar system but a richly varied world with towering ice mountains, smooth nitrogen plains, and a massive heart-shaped feature named Tomboregio in honor of its discoverer. The surface showed evidence of geological activity, challenging the assumption that such a distant body would be geologically dead. New Horizons also explored Pluto's largest moon, Charon, which is so massive relative to Pluto that the two are considered a binary system, orbiting a common center of gravity outside Pluto itself. This dynamic duo added further intrigue to the already captivating story. But New Horizons did more than take pretty pictures. Its instruments analyzed Pluto's thin atmosphere, surface composition, and interaction with solar wind. These data are helping scientists understand not just Pluto, but the entire Kuiper belt, a kind of cosmic attic filled with remnants from the solar system's formation. Studying Pluto's composition, which includes rock, ice, methane, and nitrogen, allows researchers to infer the makeup of other Kuiper belt objects, KBOs, many of which are too small or distant to study in detail. Pluto, in this way, acts as an ambassador for the outer solar system, giving us a tangible example of what lies beyond Neptune and offering clues about the early solar system preserved in ice and rock. The controversy over Pluto's status as a planet has not faded entirely. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, established a new definition of a planet. An object must orbit the Sun, be spherical due to its own gravity, and have cleared its orbit of other debris. Pluto fails the third criterion, sharing its orbit with many other Kuiper Belt objects. While some saw the change as a demotion, it was more accurately a refinement of scientific classification. The change acknowledged the complexity of our solar system and the need for clear distinctions as we discover more celestial bodies. Today, Pluto stands as the most famous of the dwarf planets, a category that includes other intriguing worlds like Eris and Ceres. Its story forces us to continually refine our understanding and reminds us that science is a living, evolving process. Zooming out, Pluto's erratic orbit and unusual characteristics challenge the neat textbook image of a solar system composed of orderly circular orbits. Instead, it reveals a cosmos governed by invisible threads of gravity, constantly shifting and balancing. The same forces that keep Pluto and Neptune from colliding also guide the paths of comets, shape asteroid belts, and influence the fates of planets. Understanding these forces helps us predict how the solar system might evolve. Could a rogue object from deep space one day disrupt the delicate balance? What might happen in the distant future as the sun expands or as gravitational interactions accumulate over eons? These are not just abstract questions, they have practical importance as we explore further and build models of long-term solar system stability. The practical impact of New Horizons extends beyond Pluto. The mission proved that we can reach and study objects at the farthest edges of our solar system. It demonstrated our ability to navigate immense distances, communicate across billions of kilometers, and operate sensitive instruments in extreme environments. The technological and engineering achievements behind the mission paved the way for future exploration of the Kuiper Belt, and even the hypothetical Oort Cloud, a distant sphere of icy bodies thought to encircle our solar system. Pluto serves as a stepping stone, a validation that deep space exploration is within our reach. While the notion of a catastrophic Pluto-Neptune collision is more science fiction than science, it's easy to see why it captures the public imagination. Such an event would be dramatic, releasing unimaginable energy and scattering debris across the Kuiper belt. Though the real-world consequences for Earth would be negligible due to the enormous distance, the scientific opportunity to study such an event would be unparalleled. But the true wonder of Pluto lies not in apocalyptic fantasies, but in the elegant reality of celestial mechanics. Its orbit is a living model of gravitational harmony, a demonstration of how even the most eccentric paths can find long-term stability in the cosmic dance. Pluto's journey also links us to larger questions in physics. The gravitational relationship between Pluto and Neptune is a microcosm of interactions on a galactic scale. Physicists like Michio Kaku and others look at such systems when exploring ideas like string theory, which seeks to unify the fundamental forces of nature. While Pluto won't unlock quantum gravity on its own, it's part of the same puzzle, a tiny piece in the grand tapestry of the cosmos. Voyager 2's camera captured what appeared to be a faint glow, radiating not from a known star, but from deep within the void. Scientists at NASA were initially skeptical, believing it to be an image artifact or sensor anomaly. However, after multiple passes and image analysis, the glow remained consistent. It was located in a region where no celestial body should be visible. What made it more bizarre was the sudden shift in background radiation levels and magnetic field data surrounding the spacecraft. It was as if Voyager had entered an unseen threshold, 
beyond which the laws of space seemed different. Among the last transmissions, one image stood out, a pattern of concentric waves, resembling ripples in a dark ocean, emanating from a pinpoint source of light. Some experts speculate it may be the distant light of a black hole interacting with interstellar plasma. Others argue it may be Voyager's camera capturing gravitational lensing effects never before documented at such a distance. But a small group of independent astronomers and theorists have proposed a more provocative theory, that Voyager 2 might have photographed the edge of a cosmic void or even the hypothetical termination shock of the observable universe. Complicating matters further, just before communication degraded, Voyager 2's plasma wave instrument recorded a sudden burst, similar to radio waves, but distorted in a way that doesn't match any known galactic source. These weren't typical emissions. They pulsed with a rhythm, almost as if encoded. Though there's no official confirmation of any intelligent source, the data has reignited public interest in the possibility of extraterrestrial contact, or at the very least, an unexplored cosmic phenomenon. Engineers have warned that time is running out. Voyager 2's power supply is dwindling, and onboard systems have already begun shutting down to